How's it going guys? Bond Callum here with my first video on this channel. Today we're going to be reviewing the Joytech Tesla coil that I purchased on Amazon for only $200. So today we're going to be taking a look at this and uh, seeing what it can do and what it does. Today's video is sponsored by me. Everything in this video was completely paid for out of my own pocket. And the way that you can help me make future videos is by subscribing to this channel and liking this video. It's completely free to you, but it helps me out tremendously. So let's go ahead and get right into it. So this is the Joytech Tesla coil that I bought on Amazon. There's a lot of different model numbers to this one, so I'm just gonna go ahead and link it into the description because I don't know which model number is completely accurate. This particular model stands about eight inches tall and it's about four inches wide. It's about six inches wide if you consider the top part as well. So basically what a Tesla coil does is it converts the standard household power into really high voltage and it'll shoot sparks out of this uh, discharge needle right here. So it goes without saying that if you're a miner, you should probably have the assistance of a parent uh, when purchasing this product. And if you're not super familiar with electricity, uh, don't mess with something like this. It's it can be really dangerous if you don't know what you're doing. But some rules of thumb, basically you want to keep all electronics at least two feet away from it because this does have an electromagnetic field surrounding it and it can damage devices if they're too close. So this here is going to be the control box. So the way this is connected, this is the power cord that plugs into the wall. This is the music cord that plugs into your phone or laptop. And then this is the cable that goes up to the Tesla coil itself. The instructions that came with it were not uh, immediately obvious how you use it. But essentially, this here controls how much power it produces. So this basically makes the spark bigger or smaller. This switch right here, if you flip it towards the dial, it does a uh, standard sine wave. I don't know exactly the frequency of it, but it just does one solid sine wave. And if you flip it away from the dial, that's music mode. So it'll play whatever you're inputting into here. Keep in mind, this thing can't play just any music. You can't just load up some Cardi B and play it through this thing. You have to play specifically square wave music. I found that retro game music seems to work really well on this thing. So for this demonstration, we're gonna be using mostly that. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and arm this thing. So you'll notice there's two lights on this controller. There's a blue one right here. And then this one's a red one, but this one's only turned on when it's actually shooting sparks. If this light is on, you don't want to go anywhere near the Tesla coil. This one is just acknowledging that it's plugged in and charged. I'm going to go ahead and dim the lights so you guys can see the sparks better. So first thing I'm going to do here is just set it on the uh, standard sine wave. So this is not playing any music, it's just playing the standard sine. Um, alrighty, so we're going to turn it up now. Full setting, it's really quite loud. Alrighty. So that's with just the standard sine wave. Let's try doing a uh, frequency sweep here just to kind of get an idea for what it starts responding to. So we got it set in music mode. Let's go ahead and get this started here and we'll see when it starts responding. Whenever you're playing audio through the audio cable, you want to make sure the volume is turned 100% up, otherwise it may not pick it all the way up. Okay, so it started responding at 27 hertz.
So I turned it off at about 2,500 hertz there just because it started like seriously shattering my eardrums. Uh, so earplugs are probably recommended. I kind of want to return here real quick and uh, see if we can measure some of those sparks. So it appears we were getting the best sparks at about 2,500 hertz. So this thing obviously works a lot better at high frequencies than lower frequencies. So let's back up here a little bit and see how big we can get that spark. So I have the uh, tape measure lined up exactly with the uh, discharge needle up there. So let's go ahead and give this a run. Alrighty, so just from eyeballing it there, it looks like the sparks were about uh, five to six inches long there. Keep in mind, this is on single phase. Uh, so 120 volts. That thing's actually shooting some pretty good sparks for uh, what it is. I mean, I only spent 200 bucks on this thing. So let's go ahead and play some music on it. All right, well that pretty much wraps up this review. Uh, this thing is actually really, really cool for uh, the $200 that I spent on it. 100% worth the investment, uh, but again, you do need to be really careful with it. Make sure you don't get within two feet of the device itself and make sure you keep all your electronics at least two feet away. But if you know what you're doing, this thing is seriously probably the coolest toy I've ever bought. I'll put a link to it down in the description below. As of the recording of this video, I don't have any Amazon affiliate links at the moment, however, uh, at some point, it probably will be an affiliate link. So if you purchase through the link that I provide you, it helps contribute to this channel and helps me purchase more devices like this to review. And it doesn't cost you anything extra. I hope you guys enjoyed this review. If you liked it, make sure you give that a thumbs up. And again, please subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. What am I saying? No one's subscribed to this channel yet. This is the very first video I've made. So please subscribe to my channel. And I hope you guys have a good rest of your day. And for those of you who are watching shortly after I uploaded this, Merry Christmas.